Yes, T Shell has been around for quite some time, but I've recently done a number of updates. So this video is to um, show you some of the new features. In particular, I've done a lot with the arpeggiator, so there are lots of uh, different ways that the arpeggiator can play back. And I've also added this little step sequencer and um, generally sort of improved things. So first of all, what is it? Well, it's a shell for playing VST instruments. Its most likely use would be perhaps um, to play VST instruments into Pro Tools using Rewire. Uh, there'll be a separate video showing you how to do that. Um, or you can just use it as a standalone VST instrument player. There are four slots for loading VST instruments and four additional slots for loading VST effects so that you can play the instruments through the effects. And there are a number of ways that um, the instruments can be played. They can just be played using this little on-screen keyboard here. They can be used via MIDI. Um, and of course, both of these are, can be either just straight or can be used as um, a means of triggering the arpeggiator, which, as I say, is, is quite a sophisticated one. And there is also a basic sort of step entry sequencer like you used to get on some old MIDI keyboards. So to load a VST instrument, first of all you'd, you'd switch the DSP on. Um, if you needed to change your audio driver, click this button here and it'll open the window and you can select your audio device there. To load an uh, instrument, click the load button, go to your VST folder, load something. Uh, if you want to um, check that it's there, edit the parameters, hit the edit button there, and there it is. But you don't need to, to have the actual instrument window open. Uh, you can set the MIDI channel there, um, program change, so you can play different uh, patches without having to open the, the main edit window. Um, here's your volume, your pan, the output selector, um, which selects pairs of physical outputs on your um, audio device or if you're using rewire selects the rewire channels. As I said you can play back using um, the on-screen keyboard to enable that here. You just press that for slot one. Um, if I wanted to use the um, use MIDI I would select my MIDI device here. Select the button for the slot there and you can play. So I can select more than one at once. Um, we also have um, here a controller. So if I set, I've set that to controller number one, we can adjust. I'll just take that one out a minute. And if you want to add um, an effect, simply a matter of loading one of these slots here. So, and turning up the level for the appropriate slot. So if we've got something in VST instrument slot number one, or we want to um, send this effect to it, if I turn that up, let's just edit it, let's do something or other, and then play. <laughs> Step sequencer has two modes of um, operation. Again, you need to enable it using these buttons here for each slot. So, if I'm just using slot number one, in mode one is the simplest mode. Um, you simply enter sixteenth notes. So, uh, it, if I put it into write mode, I can then write a sequence of sixteenth notes. <coughs> And if I hit play, oh, that's transposed at the moment. And you can play it in reverse or up and down. If you just hit off, then the sequence is stored, but if you hit right, then you go to 
uh, writing a new sequence and it erases the old one. Um, oh, you can enable MIDI transpose here as well, so if, if you wanted to... Um, Play. We're at the top end of the keyboard there, so it's very high. Um, you can also, um, in that mode, you can uh, enter rests uh, using this button here. But it's it's still all in basic sixteenth notes. Um, I think the R key on your keyboard will also enter a rest. Um, the back button, if you make a mistake, that will erase the last note that you entered. Again, B on your keyboard will um, operate that button as well. In mode two, um, you have a slightly more sophisticated uh, mode of note entry. So in mode two, if I hit a note once and hit enter. That's a sixteenth note. If I hit a note twice, that's an eighth note. Three times, that would be a dotted eighth note and so on. Uh, the same thing applies to rests. So if I wanted to hit um, uh, a quarter note rest, I'd hit that four times and hit enter. And so on. Let's have a look at the arpeggiator next because that's the most interesting thing. Um, first of all, you have to switch the arpeggiator on. Uh, you notice it clears any notes that are held in the keyboard here. Uh, select your input device, whether it's going to be this keyboard down here or whether it's going to be MIDI. The sync, which um, the clock basically. Um, defaults to the internal transport, you'd select rewire if you wanted to slave that to a rewire device. Uh, the rate and tempo can be set here. You also have to enable the individual channels here. So I've got just one device loaded here. If I press click that button there and we've got keyboard selected we should have. Now the way the arpeggiator is played back is controlled in a separate window, so if, if, if this window was to be closed you'd open that window here, so open the arpeggiator window. So this represents um, VST slot 1, so at the moment the pattern is being played um, up, it's down up and down, repeating the end, not repeating the end, random selection, and this last thing, uh, tin, which stands for tin tin, is a repeated random function. Basically, you set the, um, it, it will select a random, um, selection of notes here and repeat that pattern according to the number you set here. So we've got three notes playing at the moment. If I set random repeat to 12, you should see what happens now. And obviously that gets more interesting if you've got sort of more, more notes held down. Right. What you also have, let's just go back to a straightforward up and set up a pattern here, is um, you can set the notes to repeat at octaves, either octave down or up. So up to three repetitions. Now that defaults to um, an octave, but if you want to, you could change that to a different interval. Uh, 
and so on. Um, you also have um, a swing parameter down here so that you can change the add some swing to the to the beat here so and you also can transpose this in real time so you again you select whether you want to use the this little keyboard here or via MIDI so if I select the keyboard You can also um, get each note to repeat, st stutter, flam, whatever you want to call it, um, using these sliders here. If this is set to auto, then the number of sliders will represent the number of keys that are held down. So at the moment there's only one. So if I just, uh, in a, that's enabled for the arpeggiator if I... See what happens when I change this, this to two keys. The higher up the slider is, the, the faster the repeat is. Or if you if you. To, you can just change the number of sliders here so that you can set it up in advance so the more keys you hold down there. And so on. You can also, if I bring this window up here so that we can see more what's going on, um, use these LFOs to modulate VST parameters. You set it first of all to the source uh, which instrument you want to modulate. So if I set this to VSDI 2, click the Get Parameters button, and it will fill this list with um, the parameters in that particular plugin. So if we just go down, um, so I get that on screen. I can't get it on screen. I'll just set, select Cut Off. Um, select a waveform here, so we'll have a, a sine wave, and the rate which is relative to the arpeggiator playback rate. So if I set that to uh, 4 and the level here, we should, uh, and switch it on of course, you should hear the, the um, filter being modulated here. So let's just turn that on. And so on. Where it gets interesting is when you have a number of them playing together, 